Hello and welcome to the Code Triage How to Play video. I am Brandon Young, the creator of Code Triage. In this tutorial I will be showing you how to set up the game board and its components and an overall summary of how the game is played. Let's get started. In Code Triage you will be playing as four staff members of an overly busy, understaffed hospital on the verge of being shut down by a government agency. If you are playing with four players, Begin by randomly distributing one of each of the four player boards and give each player the action cubes matching the color on their board. As I will be playing this tutorial solo, I will be controlling all four player boards during each round of play. Code Triage is a cooperative game where all players will win or lose together. The players will lose if three patients expire, if there is not a room available to receive a patient, or if there is not a positive score at the end of your shift, but I'll explain that a little more later. To set up the game, place the game board in the center of the table with an easy reach of yourself and any other players. Place the four pawns on their respective starting spaces on the center of the game board. Shuffle the patient, room assignment, and event deck separately and place them on their respective spaces on the game board. But before you shuffle and place the patient deck, consider the following. There are eight black bordered cards that feature content more suitable to a mature audience with patient conditions such as suicide attempts and drug abuse. If yourself or the players you are playing with are not comfortable with this content, remove those cards from the patient deck immediately and place them back in the game box as their absence will have no effect on gameplay. After you've placed all three decks on the game board, place the heart tokens and ambulance dice off to the side of the board with an easy reach of all players. You are nearly ready to begin the game, but first we need to select the difficulty and desired length of game we want to play. This video will cover the normal level of difficulty by starting with four patients in play. However, for your first run through, I recommend starting with only three patients. The length of time you decide to play is up to you. For a full time or a long game, set the game clock to start on the 7 a.m. space. For a part-time or medium-length game, place the game clock cube on the 11 a.m. space. And for a contingent or short to medium-length game, place the game clock cube on the 1 p.m. space. You are now ready to begin playing. Let's take a closer look at the player boards and round summary. Each round of Code Triage has eight phases that the players will go through together before starting the next round. The eight phases are the following. Incoming Ambulance Check new patient, new event, player actions, patient discharge check, reduce patient health, reset all action cubes, and advance game clock. For the first round only, we are going to skip the first two phases of the round and instead place four patients from the patient deck onto the game board. To do this, start by turning over the top card from the patient and room assignment decks and place the patient card into the room indicated on the room assignment card. And set the room assignment card face up onto the rooms filled space on the board. Let's take a closer look at a patient card. On the left side of the card, you have patient information such as their name, date of birth, and chief complaint, as well as their risk and starting health. The patient's risk indicates what will happen to the patient should they not receive care within the time allotted as indicated by their health. This will usually be one of two options, AMA or death. AMA stands for leaving against medical advice or walking out of the hospital without complete treatment. These patients that leave AMA will count as two points against your score at the end of the game. Death risk patients have a red background, and if they do not receive treatment in time, they will expire and count as three points against your score at the end of the game. But beware, if three patients expire during the game for any reason, the government will step in and shut down the hospital and you lose. The health section tells you how many heart tokens that patient will begin the game with, as well as their maximum health. Every patient that is still in play at the end of the round will have one of these heart tokens removed from them. If it is that patient's last heart token, their card will be removed from the game board and placed into the appropriate section in the lower right hand side of the board. For this patient, add the number of heart tokens that is indicated on the card to the heart space above their assigned room. This patient will receive three heart tokens and they would normally stack like this. But for the sake of the video and being able to tell how many heart tokens 
are available for this patient, we will spread them out like so. The right side of the patient card shows some artwork that matches that patient's condition listed under the chief complaint section on the left. The bottom of the card is the doctor's order section and indicates what treatments need to be performed on them before discharge. Players will fill these orders for their respective symbols and colors on their turns with hope that they can fill all of that patient's orders before they run out of heart tokens. We will repeat this step three more times until four patients have been assigned to rooms and have their respective heart tokens placed above them in the heart spaces on the board. We will now skip over to the start of another round later in the game to show you all eight phases in order. This is the end of the first round of play. From this round forward, we'll be going through all eight phases of the round, starting with the incoming ambulance check. In the first phase of the round, an incoming ambulance check must be performed by rolling the ambulance dice together and resolving their results. One die has ambulance symbols on it and the other has patient symbols on it. On a positive ambulance symbol roll, refer to the patient die to see how many patients will be added this turn, in addition to the one that is always added in phase two, new patient. If the ambulance die shows a cancel symbol through it, Ignore the patient die and do not add any additional patients via ambulance this round. In phase two, add one patient to the emergency room by turning over the top cards of the patient and room assignment decks as explained during setup. This will always occur regardless if an ambulance arrived with more patients or not this round. We will now continue play in Phase 3, New Event. Turn over the top card from the event deck and read its instructions out loud immediately. Some events can help you, while most will harm your progress as a team by making an AMA risk patient become a death risk patient, lose a heart token, slow down player actions, or cause a player to have an extra order placed onto a patient already in play. Just read the card, follow its instructions, and resolve its effects. After you have resolved any events that may have occurred in the previous phase, we will now move on to the player actions phase, where, starting with the nurse, players will get to take four actions before passing play onto the next player. The three options for each action cube spent are move, treat, and comfort. A player may perform any combination of these three actions on their turn as often as they like, given they have action cubes still available. The first action a player can choose is movement. Spend one action cube to move your pawn up to 10 spaces in any direction orthogonally. If this movement results in a player moving into a patient's room, any unused spaces will be lost. The second action a player can choose is treatment. To treat a patient, you must be in a patient's room that has a doctor's order matching the symbol and color of the staff member you are playing. Spend an action cube and place a cube of your color onto the space at the bottom of that patient's card to fill an order. If a patient has multiple orders for your staff member, you must spend an action cube for each of them as long as you have action cubes remaining to be spent for the turn. The third and final action a player can choose to take is comfort. To comfort a patient, spend an action cube to add a heart token that patient lost from a previous round or event. This action can be performed as many times as they have action cubes available for the turn, as long as it does not exceed the health that is printed on their patient card. This allows players to have extra time to treat that patient and fill all their orders before they leave against medical advice or expire, depending on their risk. After all four players have taken their turns for the round, we will proceed to the patient discharge check phase. Examine all of the patients currently on the board at the end of the round. If all orders have been filled for any patient on the board, good job, they are ready to be discharged. Remove that patient's card and all cubes on it and place it on the discharge space on the patient status section of the game board. These two patients 
have all of their orders, including the additional order placed on them during the event phase. Both of them are ready to be discharged and removed from the game board. Give all of the cubes that have been used to fill those patient orders back to the players they belong to. They'll be used again in another round. Examine the cards from the rooms filled section of the game board. Find the rooms of the patients that were just discharged and place them back onto the bottom of the room assignment deck. This will ensure that those rooms won't be refilled immediately. After performing any discharges, we will move on to the reduce patient health phase of the round. Remove a heart token from every patient still in play. If this were to require you to remove a patient's final heart token, then they are about to leave the hospital against medical advice or expire depending on the patient's risk as indicated on their card. If this happens, remove the patient's card and all cubes on it and place it in the appropriate space on the patient status section of the game board. Also, don't forget to remove the room assignment cards from the rooms filled section of the board and place them back onto the bottom of the room assignment deck. Before moving on to the next round, there are only two phases left. Reset all action cubes and advance the game clock. If you have not already done so, move all of the action cubes from the right side of your player boards back to the left side of the board. And finally, advance the game clock 30 minutes by moving the cube to the next space on the game clock track. Repeat these eight phases listed on the round summary section of the player boards every round until the end of the turn on the 7 p.m. space. The game is now over and any patients still currently in play after the advanced game clock phase are removed from the game and not counted in the final tally of points. Count the number of points earned for patient discharges and subtract points lost due to AMA and expired patients. Players will earn one point for every discharged patient, lose two points for every patient that left against medical advice, and lose three points for every expired patient. In this example, the game ends with 30 discharges, 10 AMAs, and two expirations, leaving 26 points against the team and 30 points for the team, giving the team a score of plus four. But beware, you cannot have more than two patient deaths throughout the course of the game, because once three patients expire, you lose and the game is over. If you could discharge more patients than points lost through patient deaths and leaving AMA, you win and the hospital has been saved. Thanks for watching and I hope that you will enjoy Code Triage and becoming a backer today.